Hey, welcome back to Arca Boats, I'm Rod. So I've been making a lot of videos over the years on how to build uh, small boats. Hopefully it's uh, of interest to those at home building small boats. Uh, my kids see the videos, they, they look at some of the stuff I do and they call me a YouTuber. But one thing they always kind of say when they see some of the videos is say, Dad, can you at least wear a hat or comb your hair? Um, and secondly, they say, you know, some of the shirts you're wearing are looking pretty bad. So the other day, my youngest daughter decides that she's going to go out to the craft store, pick herself up a blank t-shirt and some special pens to write a little message. Now they know that I love boat building, but there is one thing that I enjoy uh, doing in my spare time when I'm not building boats and that is fly fishing. So my younger daughter decides she's going to get me a new shirt and uh, she's printed it up herself and it simply says, if it's not about fishing, I'm not interested. Seat, four seat first, and I just want to get a rough idea on an equidistance from the bow to a certain point. We'll say 53.5 or 54 inches. And I'll do that on both sides. And it's nice to have a piece of masking tape down there. You can write on that. You can always peel it off. You can erase and it's a lot easier to see. Next then we take the seat frame and uh, lay it across at that point. And then we'll need to center it. So the simplest way I find is to put a couple of clamps on here just so it's not going to move around. I can adjust and then I will take a ruler that has centimeters on it and measure. And right now I'm at 123 from the frame to the in whale on the inside edge. I'll do the same for the other side. I said 123 and here I have a hundred and 18. So I need to just kind of shift it a little bit away from me here. And do that by just tapping a hammer, whatever. Brush was handy. Now I'm at 120. Now I'm at 121, and I'm pretty sure the other side will be the same. One twenty-one. So the seat is centered amidships, or sorry, athwartships. So what I'm going to do is find my pencil. I want to. Draw on the tape where it's sitting, nice dark clean line there, here we are. And then what I want to do is mark on here approximately where to drill a hole through the seat, through the in whale. Now what I've had to calculate, can't really see under here, is there are the bronze screws going in holding the out whales through to the in whale. So I've shifted it a bit forward. I would ultimately be nice to be sitting in the middle of the scupper, but if I do that, I'm going to end up drilling into the bronze screw holding the out wheel on. So this way, the, the bronze screw is going straight through. This is angled across a little bit, and we should just miss the bronze screw with the carriage bolts for the seats. Yeah, I'm going to be using a 1024 4 inch long bronze carriage bolt, so basically 3 16 diameter. I'm just going to bump up a size on the drill to go through. So this will nicely go cleanly through because I'll also probably get a little epoxy in that hole before install installing the seats. So I'm not cutting the length of this right now. And the reason for that is, is that I want to have the holes and then I can cut off a little bit on the inside of the end of the seat frame and start to fit it in. Some boats will have quite a bit of tumble home. In other words, it's narrower across the seat frame or across the gunnel and it is down three inches. So I don't want to have a hole in here 
and then you know the hole being very close to the end I want to have a good half an inch of meat on the end here I've seen a lot of uh, older canoes come back where this the uh, screw hole or sort of the bolt hole is too close to the end of the frame and you know some heavy person gets in there sits down hard and tears it out so I've got a one size up on the 3 16th drill and I'm going to go down the center of the seat frame through the center of the end wheel. Trying to drill down as straight as possible. And with that, what I will do to kind of hold it from shifting around is put one of the bolts in and go to the other side. take my seat frame off, remove any bolts, should have four nice holes in there. So I'm just going to put the bolts back through the holes and then I'm going to do a little rough mark of where I think the seat frame will be cut down below. So I think it's a bit wider down, so I'm going to go a little outside of the planking itself. That's giving me at least half an inch of meat from the hole to the end. Can always take a little more off later. And with that, I'm just going to take it to my bandsaw and do a little cut. Now, there is a bit of slope to the, uh, the wall of the, of the canoe itself, so I may just taper my cut through my bandsaw a little bit. And that would be tapered a little bit wider as we go down. I'm, I mean it's a pretty straight wall in here but so we can start with going straight a little longer. nicely. Except for that one. So I think it needs to be just kind of tipped in a little bit and I think as far as I want to get this up pretty high, I think we need to trim a little bit off of the forward edge of or the forward portion of the seat frame here. It's going to rub. I don't want it rubbing as the boat is being paddled. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of bring that hole out a bit and then go trim off a little more. And there you have it. I think I've got a good, uh, I don't know, three sixteenths of an inch clearance between the frame and the wall of the hull so that you know any flexion and movement of the hull itself is not going to cause the seat frame to rub on there. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for the stern seat. Okay we're going to install these carrying yoke as well. I've just marked on the center here with a pencil where the bronze screw is going in and just to kind of center I'll go half an inch either side of that with the clamp in place, I can drill one side, then put a bolt in, move the clamp. So I'm just going to put it in place underneath and just go straight down through, centering on the in wheel. And punching through the yoke. Then I will just put a bolt in there so that I can undo this. Mark the other one half an inch from center and drill the second one. So I always put two uh, two bolts through the yoke. If I was putting a secondary thwart in which would be a little narrower I would just put one bolt. Okay. 
So the bolts I have are four inches. I don't order or use uh, multiple lengths. I'll just cut it to the length I need. So to level the seats with spacers, uh, you know, level to water line, I'll need first to level the boat. So I've got a three foot level across the gunnels. I actually look pretty level here. And then I've got another level sitting in the bottom of the boat. And it looks to me like I need to lift up the bow end. And in this case, that would mean probably just sliding the boat a little forward in the stand. That's going to lift one end up and drop the other. Getting closer. Okay, so we're level fore and aft. And we can just not going to really matter too much on the uh, level of forships because the spacers will be uh, same same length on each side. So now I want to I want to get this seat down as low as I possibly can, and the longer spacer is going to be towards the ends of the boat. So what I'm going to do rarely is put the seat in and put a couple of nuts on the bottom edges of these bolts. We're just enough to get some three or four turns on the threads. Therefore, I will have enough room when I actually put the seat in to thread it. Now, I kind of put these in here because the seat can keep dropping off of the, uh, the bolts themselves. And every time they drop, they're going to possibly make a mark on the inside wall of the new. Okay, so it's not going to fall anymore. So the maximum distance I can put on the front one, which is longer, is going to be a spacer of probably two and a quarter, two and a quarter inches. Two and an eighth right now, but the bolt is not all the way down. We can fix that by tapping the bolt down a little. So with a nut on the bottom, the spacer here is two and an eighth. So I'll just mark that down. Call that the number one spacers are two and an eighth inches. Now, how long will the back ones be? So what I want to do is the boat's level, so if that's pushed down, how far up do I have to lift the rear portion of the seat to get level? Just by playing with the nuts, I can lift up the seat a little bit and that looks to be about right there. And what is the distance here? It's two and a quarter, two and an eighth on the front. Here we are one and three quarters. So with the boat level and the seat level, so number two, one and three quarters. And I'll do the same for the rear seat. And then with the seat level, we can make a note of how long these bolts need to be. I don't really like uh, hanging bolts hanging down by an inch and a half under the seat. It's just it's a sharp edge. People get their caught on it and I like to have them just the right length. So it looks like to get a nut on there I would need three and a quarter inches on number two. I'll mark that down as bolt length. And these ones we leave full length. So next is to make the spacers. I've got some scrap cherry wood here. The gunnels are three quarters by three quarters. I would make the spacers dropping down to probably five eighths by five eighths and round to the corners. So I've calculated with the spacers I need about at least 15 to 16 inches of cherry and this one here we'll get so I have enough here now if I had uh, a longer piece of cherry but I'm trying to just use up you know the the firewood pieces I would 
cut a long piece, 5 8 by 5 8 and then I would likely just take my uh, laminate trimmer and round over the corners of all the, you know, laminate trimmer on s small pieces, a little too close to the hands for my liking, so I will just kind of gently soften all the corners on my uh, belt sander. Okay, the last thing that I like to do is actually recess the washer and nut into the underside of the seat frames and the carrying yoke. So I've got here the washer and nut. Um, what you really need though is if I want to recess the nut, I need to be able to get the actual socket into the hole there. So I'll be looking for a Forstner bit big enough for the socket to go into there and tighten up the nut. Looks like the 5 eighths is the one I need. Just going to punch down into here, centering the coarser bit. Just go in, not too far. Just enough to hide the nuts. Just nice to seal up the end grain on the frames and the yoke and just kind of swirl a little epoxy. This is sealed in a couple of coats of epoxy. Uh, we're ready to install the seats once varnishing is completed. I have put a nice coat, couple of coats of high gloss varnish on the seats and I will then just uh, cut my hangers, put all the bolts in, cut bolts, get everything tidied up. So I could cut the uh, spacers by hand I suppose, but I'm just going to use my cross cut sled here. I've got my uh, stop. So as mentioned earlier, the bolts that's going to go through there are 3 16 diameter. I've gone up a couple of sizes in drill bits just so that there's a little bit of wiggle room inside there for the bolt to slide up and down nicely. And because I've used my cross cut sled, I'm able to just stand it on a piece of wood here, scrap piece, and drill now. The natural and obvious thing to do would be to drill straight through the center of the uh, spacer. However, Usually when you put these in, I want these to be set back as much as possible so they're not sticking out past the gunnel. Therefore, I will likely just try and go off center a little bit um, when drilling the hole. So it's time to cut the bolts. I'm going to start by putting the center yoke in first because that's going to spread the center of the boat to the proper beam and then the seat should fit in uh, properly as well. So I know that the center uh, bolts need to be about two inches long so I'll just throw them in my vise here and give them a quick cut. Once cutting them you know we get a bit of a pretty of a sharp burr on there so I'm just going to take it to my sander here and just clean up the edges so we don't have any cross threads or dangerous for someone being in the boat in shorts so I want to have them cut themselves on a, the end of a sharp bolt. So with everything lined up I can just tap. So with the nuts on by hand I'm just going to tighten them up. So what I find is that you've got this nice little knurled edge on uh, my small socket and I, as I'm turning I don't want that to be grinding in the side so I just take a Grab a piece of paper and kind of just protect my hull. I just put the bolts in, but I haven't pushed them all the way down because what I need to figure out is putting the spacer in, one which wears the best location so that it's hidden, but also 
is sometimes I, you need to bevel the top of the spacer a little bit to fit underneath the uh, gunnel properly. So we're just going to do a test run and then I'll take them in and out and adjust as necessary. Okay, I've got the front spacer in. Let's do the shorter spacer on the rear portion of the seat. And the seat is in. And thank you very much for watching. Thanks to all my subscribers. You can check out my website at orcaboats.ca. Check out some photos, some pictures, lots of videos there on my YouTube channel as well.